Hello everyone and welcome back to Kayla's Kitchen. Today we are doing another tea talk about how I prepare an afternoon tea. So for Thanksgiving, and I did my Thanksgiving vlog a, um, a couple weeks ago, and you know on Thanksgiving, I posted about that I made an afternoon tea for my family for our Thanksgiving dinner, and a bunch of people thought that that was really cool, so I thought, why not kind of show you guys the process for putting together an afternoon tea? But before we get into that, let's talk about what tea I'm drinking. So here I have Honey and Sons Cranberry Tea. Mm. This is so good. It is tart and sweet and it's just one of my favorite herbal teas. Mm. I really love this one and I have it in a very pretty poinsettia holiday teacup because holidays. So I am filming this video in December, but this is going to be my general process for how I plan out a afternoon tea, just in general. I am going to use all recipes from Tea Time Magazine. This is their November, December 2020 issue. So all of the recipes that I use are coming out of this magazine if you wanted to look those up. The one thing that is nice about pulling all of your recipes out of Tea Time Magazine is that generally all of their recipes will just go together because it's it's published in a cohesive issue, so it's meant to work like that. <laughs> the first step of making an afternoon tea, of course, is deciding on what recipes and what you're going to serve. Generally, for an afternoon tea, there are three courses, but there could be four, and we'll talk about that at the end. But the main three courses is a savories course, your scone course, and then your dessert course. So the last thing that you could also have would be a soup or salad course. Um, that can kind of be lumped into a savories course as well. When I did my afternoon tea for Thanksgiving, I did a full four course because we were doing like a big Thanksgiving meal, right? So I, I wanted to make it a little bit more bountiful than just a normal afternoon tea. Typically what you'll find at like a restaurant or a tea house is the traditional three course with an option to add on the fourth course. What I did in this video for the afternoon tea that I ended up making, I just did the traditional three course. Um, so we're gonna talk about those three courses mostly. So first off is deciding about your savories. So savories are just that. They are something savory to eat. So they are going to be probably the most filling, but there's like kind of a question mark over that. Um, but th they are kind of like the meal part of an afternoon tea because the other two things, scones are more of a side dish and then your desserts are just that, they're dessert. So it is with um, an afternoon tea when you're we're having savories, the savories are the the main meal part of what you are having. So typically I like to do between two and four different savories and that kind of depends also on how many of each thing you're going to make. So for example, you kind of need to think about like if you're making sandwiches, maybe you want to have four different kinds of sandwiches, but if you serve everyone two of those sandwiches, then that's kind of a lot because then everyone has eight sandwiches, right? So typically I would do, if I did two items, I would do two of each or maybe two of one and three of another or something like that, right? And then if you do four, maybe just one of each and it kind of depends on what you're doing. So that is the first thing that needs to be decided is what are you planning on doing for your savories? What I did for this one is I did two savories and two of each. So from the trusty Tea Time magazine that I've been whirling around because I talk with my hands, I made the Israeli salad cups which come on page 26 and that's like cucumber, tomato, bell pepper, stuff like that diced up and inside of um, wonton wrappers and then uh, they're, they're served cold and topped with feta cheese. Instead of doing wonton wrappers, I decided to use some phyllo dough cups because um, I did. <laughs> the phyllo dough cups came just like already baked and prepared, so that was just easier for me. So that's why I decided to do that. But of course the recipe dictates for baking some wonton wrappers. 
And then I also made the roasted grape and brie tartlets, which are on page 35. And so I did two of each for each person. The uh, grape and brie tartlets I also did in phyllo dough cups because I was just doing this for me and my parents. So that's only three people. So a package that came with 12 phyllo dough cups was perfect to use, you know, four for each. It worked out perfectly. Um, it does actually have you use uh, puff pastry uh, tart cups, um, but I didn't do that. <laughs> um, once again, just because I wanted to just get one thing. That's another thing is that even though, right, this, this magazine calls for some other things, thinking about how you can effectively use all the ingredients that you're buying, right? I wouldn't want to buy a package of 48 wonton wrappers to only use six of them, right? I, I would want to buy something that will be useful across a multitude. So that's why I chose to go with phyllo dough cups because it was a package of 12 and we needed 12 items, so phyllo dough cups. And once again, because I am drawing from Tea Time Magazine, I knew that these items were going to go together because everything in this magazine is very easily able to be mashed up together into one cohesive meal. Um, just because that's the way that they structure their issues is that all the recipes kind of go with one another so you can pick and choose which ones you want to do and then that's going to make a wonderful afternoon tea. Otherwise, when I'm thinking about afternoon tea, if I were doing not one out of tea time, my typical what I choose for afternoon tea is a cucumber sandwich, a chicken salad sandwich, and typically I will choose one other thing if I can. So sometimes I've done Capri salad bites, I've done little tart things, you know, anything. I also like to do a salad as well, but instead of doing it as a salad course, just kind of serving it alongside the savory so that it's, it's the salad is just a part of the savory's course. And that's a much more like my fallback. Like that's, I do that quite often when I make an afternoon tea. Then the next thing to think about is the scone course. So scones are fairly easy to make. I feel like there is this, not necessarily a stigma, that's way too strong, but this idea that like scones are a difficult thing to make and they're really not. They're actually super simple um, and you can make them super fast too. They, they most of the time it, it is, you know, 10 minutes of prep work and then just however long it takes to make. It, they're super simple, super fast. Now, unlike a savory's course, which is probably the one that requires the most thought to put into it, um, scones are just a lot um, simpler, particularly if you're doing an unflavored scone. Flavored scones get a little bit more complicated. Um, with a scone, if you want to do a flavored scone, you, you want, once again, want to pick something that's going to lend itself well to both the savories and your desserts. So, for example, if you do a lemon scone, you wouldn't necessarily want to have a lemon flavored dessert or something like that. Like, you want to make sure that it's something that goes along with, not the same flavor profile as. So that's kind of my biggest piece of advice with scones. Typically when I do an afternoon tea, I use my just, it's a, an Irish scone, plain, nothing added in recipe. And that is my favorite recipe to do. So what I did for this one, once again, all the recipes from this Tea Time magazine are going to lend itself well to going with each other. So I did these orange almond scones, which are on page 34. These were super good. The one thing that I did differently with this recipe is instead of rolling out the dough and then cutting out shapes, I just took <laughs> lumps of dough and baked them because I was kind of in a pinch for time. I was, I, my family had things that they needed to do at a specific time and I was coming very close to that time um, when I was making this. So I decided that instead of taking the extra time to roll it out, and cut out beautiful shapes. I was just going to divide it into 12 and plop them on the baking sheet, which once again works great. Like it, they baked up wonderfully. It's not going to ruin the scones or anything like that. It's just a little bit faster, um, but they don't look as pretty. The only other thing to really think about with a scone is what are you going to serve with it? So scones are traditionally served with some kind of butter, Devonshire cream, clotted cream, whipped cream, something like that, and a type of jam. 
So when you're thinking of a flavored scone, you want to think of a type of jam that's going to lend itself well to that. So with these orange and almond scones, I decided to use apricot jam because I had leftover. <laughs> I made pumpkin walnut scones from the, I believe it was the 2019 November, December tea time issue. Um, it might have been the September, October issue though. I don't really remember. Either way, whichever issue it was, it was another tea time recipe, pumpkin walnut scones. And I chose apricot jam to go with that. So I just, because I had the apricot jam, I used it with these orange and almond scones and that worked wonderfully. It went very well with them. And then choosing whether or not you're going to use like butter or clotted cream or like whipped cream isn't as important because none of those things really have flavor, right? At most, like whipped cream is sweeter. So maybe if you're you choosing like a super sweet scone, you don't want to do whipped cream. Um, but clotted cream is kind of like in the middle where it is slightly sweet, but it is not like it's not fully as savory as butter is. Um, and butter, of course, is going to be savory unless you do some kind of flavored butter, which of course you could also do flavored butter. But for this afternoon tea that I made, I chose just apricot jam and we just did butter because I didn't have anything else. Scone course, a little bit more simple than the savories course. And then the desserts course is once again, a little bit more complicated. Um, by the time you get to the desserts course, tea desserts are very light. Um, they are typically what's called a petite four, which is traditionally it's cake, but it has more been um, turned into just any tiny like bite-sized dessert. So you want something that is tiny and bite-sized. Um, very common things are like shortbread cookies or butter cookies. Um, right, traditional petite four is made with, with cake and then with an icing glaze. Macarons are very com common. I'm trying to think what else I've done. Like little tarts, custard tarts or fruit tarts. Um, mini pies, which is basically a fruit tart, I don't know. Um, or the other thing that you can do is instead of making an assortment of mini desserts is a whole cake and everyone has a slice of cake um, or something like that or a pie, everyone has a slice of pie, right? So there's kind of once again two options there. You can do a whole bunch of little mini ones or maybe not a whole bunch but a nice little assortment or a slice of you know a, a, a main dessert that's going to be for everyone. Once again, the main thing here is thinking about what is going to go well with your other items. I like to do shortbread cookies because they are super easy to make. Uh, shortbreads are, are very common as well. When I did my afternoon tea for Thanksgiving, I made, it's actually from this issue, this maple pecan chiffon cake that's on the cover and that was delicious. It was so good. Um, some other things that I've done. I, a long time ago, did a afternoon, a Valentine's Day afternoon tea, and I made some lemon curd tarts, where I just made tart shells and then put lemon curd in the middle, and those were pretty good. It's, once again, your dessert is just, it's very dependent on what you choose for your savories course and then what you choose for your scone course. Uh, like I said with the scones, right, I would not choose to make either an orange or an almond dessert to go with to go after orange almond scones, right? Just because it's the same flavor, we've already had that, we wanna have something new. So from this issue, I made these cardamom butter cookies, which were delicious. Um, this is on page 38. These were super, super good. They just had this nice hint of spice. I ended up not dipping them in the white chocolate because like I said before, I ran out of time. So that is kind of my thought process for making an afternoon tea. When it comes to actually preparing for an afternoon tea, it takes a lot of forethought just to make sure you're getting your timing right. Um, you want to make sure that you start, you know, your thing that's going to take the longest first, right? So when I did this, I made the cardamom butter cookies first because those also, the nice thing about making those first is those can go you, you make them, you bake them, and then they can sit and they're not gonna, you know, nothing's gonna happen. 
the scones, I right, personally, I don't like making scones the day before. Scones, when, once they've sat a day, they're just not as good. So I always wanna make sure when I do an afternoon tea that the scones are made the day of. Um, scones are wonderful when they're hot out of the oven, but the, the biggest thing is making sure that it's day of for me. Some people, that doesn't really bother them, but for me, a day old scone is just, it's just not as good. And of course your savories are typically going to need to be made and actually like assembled day of. As when you're making any, you know, fairly large multiple course meal, thinking about time is the most important thing. How long is this going to take in the oven? Because of course you also can't really have two things in the oven at the same time. I mean, you can, but it might mess with your baking times and things like that. So thinking about, let me start the thing that can, you know, sit and, you know, once it's out of the oven, letting it sit is gonna be fine versus right, the, the bacon and brie tarts. I wanted to make sure that I was serving those as close to the time that they were actually prepared. That's just kind of some other little thought process things. But once again, the to me, the most important thing with making an afternoon tea is cohesion. I want to make sure that all the courses go together. I wanna to make sure that what I serve in the savories is going to be complemented by the scones and the desserts. Um, yeah, and just thinking about how many people am I serving? How many of each item do I need to make? Uh, how can I maybe reuse the ingredients that I'm buying? So those are for me the big things about making an afternoon tea. And that is my general thought process when I go about planning an afternoon tea. Um, the other thing, which you're probably wondering about that I haven't talked about at all yet, is tea. Um, typically when I do an afternoon tea, I have enough single serve teapots that I generally just let people choose what type of tea they want to have. Um, that's my preferred way of doing it. That's how most afternoon tea, like restaurants, when you go to a tea house, they're going to serve it. I, I just like that more. With this one that I made today was, I decided to serve Hardy and Sons Gingerbread Festival. And that went very well because it's a warming, it's a black tea, it's got those spices in it. It, it was, it went very nicely with all the items. So if you are going to pick the teas that you're going to serve, once again, just thinking about what will go well with this? What's going to accent these? Not necessarily, oh, I'm serving something with cranberry, so I wanna have a cranberry tea but what is going to complement the cranberry well. But that is my thought process for planning out my afternoon tea. That is what I think about my process, my, my mental state when thinking about making an afternoon tea. I hope that this was helpful for some people and I hope that someone will be able to use this and make their own afternoon tea at home because I, really think that afternoon tea at home is such a fun and special thing. It is, it can sound very daunting, right? Making a whole afternoon tea, it's a three course meal, but it's honestly, it's not as hard as it sounds and it really is so fun. So I really hope that you'll be able to try making your own afternoon tea at home because it's super fun. But that is all for this episode of Kayla's Kitchen. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe down below. But that will be all for now. So as always, happy sipping.